Welcome to Better Health Guy Blogcasts, empowering your better health. And now, here's Scott, your Better Health Guy. The content of this show is for informational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any illness or medical condition. Nothing in today's discussion is meant to serve as medical advice or as information to facilitate self-treatment. As always, please discuss any potential health-related decisions with your own personal medical authority. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 83 of the Better Health Guy blogcast series. Today's guest is Professor Brian Peskin, and the topic of the show is Parent Essential Oils. Brian Peskin is a world-leading scientist specializing in parent essential fatty acids, or EFAs, termed parent essential oils, or PEOs, and their direct relationship to cardiovascular disease, cancer, and wound care. While advancing the scientific understanding of the role of essential fatty acids in the body's metabolic pathways, he has also advanced the discoveries of Nobel Prize winner Otto Warburg to increase cellular oxygenation. These concepts are described in his book, The Hidden Story of Cancer. Amazingly, there is a fundamental cancer-heart disease connection whereby the same physiologic solution solves both conditions— This information will lead to a new understanding of how to treat and prevent both cancer and heart disease. The basis for Peskin's current work, grounded strictly in state-of-the-art science, in particular physiology, can be found in his seminal work and peer-reviewed medical journal articles. Clinical physicians throughout the world have validated his EFA recommendations. In the most exciting development to date, Brian's theoretical conclusions were recently and completely validated in a physiological experiment by precise instrumentation capable of measuring arterial compliance. This experiment provided the first conclusive clinical proof and validation of his theory. And now my interview with Professor Brian Peskin. I have been aware of the work of parent essential oils and the work of Professor Brian Peskin for many years now and personally have incorporated plant-based oils into my morning power shake for several years. And I'm honored today to have Brian on the show to share with us information about parent essential oils. Thanks so much for being here today, Brian. My pleasure. Thank you. So how did you go from being a systems engineering background from MIT to the work of parent essential oils? What drew you into the health field? And did you have some personal experience with your own health or a family member that kind of brought this to become your passion? Yeah, excellent question. Absolutely personal. My wife became type 1 diabetic in her 30s doing, quote, everything right. Lots of exercise, high carbs, low fat, went to a top diabetes doctor in California, came back, her blood chemistry was worse after utilizing his nutritional recommendations. I said, well, why the heck did you pay him? She goes, and and why didn't you get the blood chemistry there? We have to pay in advance, of course. If they gave you the blood chemistry there, people would want their money back. That's why you get it when they're gone. And it was my goodness, if a top MD doesn't know what the heck to do to make my blood sugar better, maybe you can help. And it was a five-year journey, but I went to the health store and they would anybody do. So I get one book, you know, like Atkins, lots of protein, lots of fat, no carbs. Then you get the opposite by Ornish. You go, hey, both decent credentials. Who do I believe? My comment was, I don't believe anybody. Is there a field of science? Because I'm a hardcore engineer. So it's all physics, it's mathematics, it's all science. It's not open to discussion. The answer is, yeah, it's called physiology and biochemistry. And luckily, I live in Houston, Texas. We have the top cancer center in the world, MD Anderson Cancer Center. And they were nice enough, Jesse James Library, Jesse Jones, not Jesse James, the outlaw, the Jesse Jones Library over on Fanta Street, it's one of the top 10 medical libraries in America, 300,000 medical textbooks, medical journals. They let me spend years there. And whole new understanding came out and it was my goodness. The science says one thing, the popular recommendations by most of the medical community are the exact opposite. Somebody really needs to be starting to write about this with hardcore science. And that's what I specialize in. What I do now, I would say is theoretical physiology and it's in the cell membrane. 
And it was very interesting. So I came across the work of Dr. R. Warburg, MD, PhD, Nobel Prize winner, greatest physiologist in the 20th century with cancer and lack of oxygen. So that's what started on the road, but it's all founded in hardcore science. And this is not an amusement to me. It is all I do for 20 years. I stay in the same area, cell membranes, and it extends because I'm right. It's like the center of the circle. Anywhere you go out on the radius on the circumference, you're right. People that don't understand the cell membrane get all kinds of inconsistencies. And we'll talk about that because the cell membrane is the brain of the cell. It's not the nucleus. That was disproved 10 years ago. But the medical field is typically 20 years behind in the recommendations. Very tragic. So tell us what you mean by the statement that you look at the body as a system using your systems engineering background from MIT. Yeah. So what's Excellent the, question. What's the system and what's so the I'm very good at analyzing complex systems for electrical engineering, transmission lines, that sort of thing. So I use that to make an analogy with the body. The input is the food. The system is us. The output is your state of health. Do you have any energy? How's your weight? So I said the system has to be perfect. God doesn't make mistakes. It's like if I have a Ferrari not running right. Well, I can look at the spark plugs. I can look at the timing. I can look at the fuel injection. And they all could be wrong. But nobody thought to go, what if this idiot put the wrong gasoline in the tank and used diesel fuel because it's cheaper or unleaded because it's cheaper instead of the super premium fuel? The car would die immediately. The human body is so good and engineered so perfectly, even with wrong fuel, we don't die right away. Now we get sick as heck, and this is all the degenerative health conditions we have today, and it's getting worse and worse. But that is where I started. And I started with the body doesn't have mistakes. For example, there isn't a cholesterol sensor in the bloodstream. Well, if cholesterol mattered, there would be. Why? Because there's a sensor for everything else, calcium, sodium, blood glucose, and it's tied to one part in a thousand for blood glucose. So that's a tenth of a percent, one part in a thousand. So if the body needs it, it senses it. Cholesterol, we'll talk about that after, completely failed in preventing heart disease. And they mislead you with relative risk versus absolute risk. We'll talk about that. So you co-authored the book, The PEO Solution with Dr. Robert Rowan. Um, he's been yes. on this podcast before. So tell us a little yes. about your collaboration with him. I mean, did it take you some time to kind of bring him over to your perspective? What, what was that like? Well, I've known him and he's known in my work and it took him a long time to really accept it until there was clinical proof of what I was saying. I said, you can't do a biopsy on somebody and see this. So we did a study, and it was called the Iowa study, investigating oils with respect to arterial health. And within three months, we got all patients about 7.2 years biologically younger, which means increased blood flow, increased arterial flexibility, regardless of exercise, regardless of what they were doing in three months. And the statistics were P level of 0 0.001, which is one part in a thousand compared to the five parts in a hundred that they typically do in studies, which means a 5% inaccuracy rate. So what happens in most studies is there's an error. And if you do more studies, the error gets significant with absolute numbers. Like fish oil studies, for example, they say there's 15,000. Well, at a 95% confidence interval, 5% of those studies act like it worked when it actually fails. So five times 15,000 is 750 studies will come out looking like the fish oil worked when in actuality it completely failed. So this probability was huge and it worked in virtually everybody, about 80%, 75% of patients compared with statins that work in 1%. So when Dr. Rowan saw that, he was really on board because he's a clinician. He's a master of oxidative therapy with ozone. So he was big on oxygen. He understood the role of oxygen in the body. And now I had clinical proof. And it took a while to decide to do the book together. And he is a raw foods vegan. So never in history, to my knowledge, is there a hardcore carnivore like me. Now I'm less of one, given what I learned from Dr. Rowan, but I'm still a carnivore, eat a lot of steaks and hamburgers and you know meat, and a raw food's vegan. That's never been done. Usually they hate each other's guts. But our 
intersection is the requirement of fully functional, unadulterated parent oils. And that's the omega-6 side. So all the cooking oils in the store, supermarket, sunflower oil, olive oil, all of the oils, unless they're organic, are processed. And that's a trans fat into a sterified fat. There's many ways to make these oils not go rancid. The problem is when it gets into our cell membrane, we have 100 trillion, they don't work. It's like a plastic cell membrane. So if you look at a hydrogenated oil and you give it to a plastics engineer, he'll go, it's the same darn thing. Now, what could get through plastic? Nothing. So it was very exciting to do the book. And we started very elementary, meaning you don't need to know a lot. And then the physiology gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And there's a perspective from a carnivore's aspect and a raw foods vegan aspect. But the intersection is so strong with the need for these oils. And it's incredible. We'll talk about that. And more and more of the work is coming out showing parent omega-6 is required. Nobody is overdosed on it. They're overdosed on adulterated parent omega-6. So the book has had worldwide acclaim because I specialize in giving science physicians haven't seen before. They're very busy. They don't have time to regurgitate the stuff everybody knows. So I live in the medical journals like lipids, like prostaglandins, leukotrienes, essential fatty acids. Physicians live in the journals like New England Journal of Medicine, JAMA, very clinically related. I'm in medical textbooks like Textbook of Medical Physiology, um, Theoretical <laughs> Physiology, Theoretical Biology. They do have these books, Mathematical Biology. These books are there, but physicians don't have the time and don't read those. So I'm hardcore science, and it's just wonderful when I predict something that finally comes out as being true, and most of it has, especially with fish oil. So let's set the stage a little bit for people yeah. listening. So some basics in terms of what we mean by parent essential oils. So most people listening, I'm sure they've heard of DHA and EPA yeah. from fish oil, but they may not have heard about LA or linoleic acid or parent omega-6, as you referenced, or ALA, alpha linoleic acid, or parent omega-3. So what are plant-based parent oils, which you call PEOs or parent essential oils. And just for clarity, this is not essential oils like people are thinking from right. a perspective of, you know, the, the other types of essential oils that yeah, might you be smell or put on your yeah, skin. To totally right. different. So, and then yeah. why are PEOs termed essential? Absolutely. I coined the term parent essential oil because so many in the medical and healthcare professional were using the term EFA incorrectly. EFA stands for essential, and there's only two essential oils the body can't make. That's parent omega-6 and parent omega-3, LA, ALA. DHA, EPA, GLA are what's called derivatives. They come from the parents that the body makes as needed. And there was a big mistake in the whole medical profession thinking all the parents would get converted to derivatives, and that's completely untrue. I'll talk about more in a minute with that. But there's only two essential oils the body can't make. Parent omega-6, parent omega-3. And the whole medical profession is calling DHA and EPA fish oil essential. It's not essential in the least. Dr. Rowan showed me there's multiple cultures, at least five that are landlocked, have no source of fish whatsoever, and their health is just fine. They've done studies with vegetarians eating no fish. Their DHA EPA level is fine. And we're highly, highly misled. Now, the reason why you need the parents, we have 100 trillion cells, and every one of them has a bilipid membrane. So the membrane is half fat, half protein. There's virtually no carbohydrate in a cell membrane, virtually none, structurally. Out of that half fat in the cell membrane, 25% to 33%, a quarter to a third, are PEOs, parent omega-6, parent omega-3. The predominance, when you analyze the entire body and the tissues, it's 11 to 1 in favor of the parent omega-6. 11 to 1. So nobody is overdosed on omega-6. They're overdosed on adulterated non-functional omega-6. And here's the reason. You go into a fish market at the supermarket, and it typically smells. That is the omega-3 oils oxidizing. Oxidized oils are like rusty combines with oxygen. And that's very bad for food. So you can't have cereals smelling like fish that's gone bad. I understand that. 
The problem is we need that reactivity in the body. There's natural antioxidants, so that won't happen. But if we get adulterated oils, you have that 100 trillion cell membranes that aren't structurally sound. So the parent oils are the brick and mortar of the entire body. Without that structure, you will fall apart and nothing works. And the derivatives are secondary. They're called acosinoids. There's prostaglandins, leukotrienes, cytokines. They're all tied with inflammation. And now it's known chronic inflammation, and that's one of the biggest problems we have today, is the cause of cancer, heart disease is just eating away. And a superb article just came out. And this was in August 2017, Nature Reviews Molecular Cell Biology. So again, it's an article a physician would never read. The cell membrane is actually sensing fully functional parent omega-6 and parent omega-3 in the cell membrane. And if it's adulterated, it chronically inflames. This was never known. And I didn't know the cell had that kind of intelligence to say, help, something's wrong. And of course, we never listened. So this is one of the main reasons why everybody is running around with chronic inflammation. If they're not getting unadulterated, fully functional, organic, has to be organic, parent omega-6 and parent omega-3, you are in deep trouble. And this is the foundation of health. The membrane is the intelligence of the cell. It is not the nucleus. You can rip out a nucleus and the cell lives for two months. You rip out the membrane, two days it's dead. So is, does the cell membrane have an intelligence, meaning that if you're getting enough of the uh, parent omegas that you're talking about here, yes, um, fully functional, yes. E even if you're still getting some adulterated oils, will the cell membrane incorporate the healthy parent oils or do you still need to reduce the adulterated oils? Excellent question. It goes in as a proportion. Dr. Lanz did this experiment in 1990 and you can radioisotope it so you can tell where it's going. And I met him. Brilliant, brilliant man. He's retired now. And it goes in as a percentage. So if I'm eating 30% junk and 70% good unadulterated oils, you have a cell membrane that's 30% screwed up. If you're at 50-50, like most Americans, because even the finest restaurants using adulterated oils, they're using oils, that, soybean oil, any oil that they have has extenders in it. They want it lasting for weeks, if not a month. And the price we pay is a cell membrane that doesn't work. So the body can't tell. Trans fat, regular fat, it goes in there. And here's what you need to understand. Otto Warburg conclusively showed you will get cancer if you have a 35% oxygen reduction in the cell membrane. Intermittently, over time, that's why cancer takes years to develop, you will get cancer. You don't feel it. You don't notice it. You got a big problem. So if you're at the 35% deficiency level of getting fully functional oils. These oils are oxygen transfers. Dr. Campbell did a superb paper, 1976, pediatrics, looking at cystic fibrosis patients with the oxygen transfer into the cell, and it's all in the parent omega-6 oils. That's the disassociation curve is like hemoglobin. So all of the medical profession thinks oxygen comes from the hemoglobin and diffuses into the cell automatically. No, it doesn't. If you have an adulterated membrane, it gets hit. It's like it can't go through plastic because I have doctors saying that all the time. Small molecule doesn't need anything wrong. Your assumption was the cell membrane worked. No one's is. So that is big, big problem with the oxygen transfer. So if you have maximum oxygenation, that's how the body kills everything. Viruses, bacteria, that is it. Ask any physician. Dr. Rowan, an oxygen master with ozone. Well, this is like being in the hyperbaric chamber, and they use that for all kinds of conditions. You're deoxygenated. This is like being in a hyperbaric chamber 24 hours a day without having to do anything. But it makes the structure, and it makes all the derivatives, the two biggest ones from the parent omega-6 outside of structure, PGE-1. That is the body's number one anti-inflammatory. So if you have arthritis, you have any kind of inflammation problem, PGE1 is the answer. It also reduces and eliminates arterial occlusions. 
or stenosis, they call it. So any kind of clog in an artery, Dr. Weiss, a top German physician, knew this in 1981. I've never seen any physician that knew it. It's in journals that they don't read, and it's under-publicized. So I specialize in, again, giving you information the average physician, average health professional hasn't seen before. And if you haven't seen it, you can't be responsible. So PGE1 is the body's number one anti-inflammatory, reverses the clogging in the arteries, and it's a vasodilator, so it increases blood flow. We have a rampant problem with Alzheimer's, dementia. The brain, the capillaries are 100% parent omega-6, and there's hundreds of millions of them. So if they're non-functional, they don't work, you don't get the nutrient transfer, you have no memory, you have no brain, you're an idiot. And most people are so stupid today, it's <laughs> tragic. They have no memory. Go into a restaurant, tell somebody what you want, and half a minute later, they forget what the heck he even said. And I've noticed this getting on and on. Women, cellulite, that is the cell membrane being screwed up. When it's proper, it's like you have the same charge on each membrane. It pushes apart and gives you a smooth surface. This is like it's sticking together because it's screwed up. So the applications are incredible. The other major derivative on the omega-6 side is prostacyclin called PGI2. That makes it where the platelets can't stick together, can't stick to an artery wall, and it's a vasodilator also, so you get two increasing that critical blood flow everywhere. On the omega-3 side, there's virtually nothing. The omega-3 series is 1 20th as powerful as the omega-6. Wow. This whole fish oil thing is horrible. We'll talk more about that. But the structure needs... The average tissue is about four to one, parent omega-6 compared to parent omega-3, and there's 2,600 times more parent omega-3 in the body, ALA, than there is DHA and EPA. So I concentrate on the parents. I have a colleague, Paul Beattie. He's the world expert in acosinoids. He specializes in derivatives. He's in Toronto, Canada. You put the two together, you have the structure and all the anti-inflammatory and vasodilators that the body makes as needed. And I'll talk about what the problem was, thinking all parents went to derivatives in a minute. So it, it, it's very exciting. But yeah, you have to make sure you're getting fully functional, unadulterated parent omega-6 and enough omega-3 or the adulterated goes in that cell membrane, it doesn't work. One thing you get, insulin resistance. Why do people think that's happening? The insulin can't get into the cell. All the hormones go through that cell membrane. There's about seven different membranes it has to go through to hit the tissue. Dr. Rowan did an analysis of this. So you have seven chances of a screwed up membrane. The intima, the inner lining of the artery, is all parent omega-6, 100%. And in every medical textbook, it's called one layer. There's actually 10 layers, and a brilliant pathologist, Dr. Sabotin, he's an MD, PhD, and a pathologist. He read one of my papers, and he called me up, and he said, Brian, do you understand that the intima is not just one layer thick? On average, it's 10. Could be as many as 15. I said, well, it's never said that. He goes, nowhere is it said that. In any study, in anything, it's never said that. And he sent me his paper, and I saw the microsmophy. There's 10 layers, and the minute I saw that, it was, my goodness, now in the inner lining of the artery, there's 10 times the probability of something screwed up in that intima, which is all parent omega-6, and this is why heart disease is through the roof in spite of statins. Everybody's on statins. It doesn't work. So it's very, very exciting. So just to kind of summarize for people, so these derivatives, yeah. which come from the parent oils, the LA and ALA, they are things like DHA, EPA, the other things that you talked about as well. So we don't necessarily need to consume DHA and EPA in supplement form if we're getting the right parents that then can create these derivatives. So how much of the parent oil stays parent oil versus becoming a derivative? And then are there certain people that maybe have specific health conditions that are not able to make that conversion and thus would benefit from some fish oils? Excellent questions. The amount of conversion is less than 1%. This was the mistake decades ago the entire medical profession made, but it wasn't their fault. They didn't have high-resolution chromatography. So they thought the majority of the parents would get converted to derivatives. So if that was true, 
that would make sense. Be easy on the body, give it what it needs. Came out in 2000, 2001, 2010, National Institutes of Health, United States Department of Agriculture, measured, again, with radioisotope testing, how much DHA is used in the brain per day, because that's the biggest suppository, right? 7.2 milligrams, and that is on the high side. That is with a big brain guy, because it's by body weight, could be as low as half a milligram, but 7.2. And if you look and see how much DHA EPA is in fish oil, the average person taking the recommended dosage, which is three grams, is getting 20 to 500 times overdose. And to put that in perspective, it'd be take 200 aspirin and call me in the morning. Don't, I'm being facetious, you're dead. This is what they're doing on a daily basis. And a superb article just came out because actually it just came out in the Cochrane study, which is the world's leading reviewer of studies. In July 2018, fish oil is worthless for preventing heart disease. It does nothing. They looked at 25 placebo double-blind studies that were excellent, and they said, we're highly confident in this result. We don't need wishful thinking. So that came out. Another one just came out, New England Journal of Medicine, last month, August 2018. Fish oils do not prevent heart attacks or strokes in people with diabetes. And they were getting one gram a day. Now, one gram a day is plenty. You need 7.2 milligrams, one gram is 1,000 milligrams. If you figure 60% is DHA EPA, there's other stuff in fish oil, but the majority is DHA EPA. So that'd be 600 milligrams. You're getting an overdose of 30 to 40 times because the fish oil people go, oh, you didn't give me enough of it. 30 to 40 times the amount. That's called a supraphysiologic overdose. The stuff doesn't work. What is fish oil? Antifreeze for fish. Why do I say that? Well, fish is living in 30, could be as high as 70, but typically very cold water. If I threw you into the water, you'd freeze into a block of ice and die. So nature has two choices. Alcohol, because alcohol is a very, very low freezing point. Put vodka in the freezer, it doesn't freeze, right? They have vodka bars for that. And it's just a tragedy. So it's either the Alcohol, which you can't do, you'd have drunk, drunk fish, <laughs> or long chain fatty acids. That's the DHA EPA. And Dr. Rowling sent me a superb article, said, Brian, do you know the difference in DHA content in the fish from freezing cold water, 30 degrees, to 70 degrees? Because there are warm water fish. I said, no, what the heck is it? Factor of 14 times less. So this proves just what I said that is antifreeze for a fish and nature gives the fish 14 times, that's 1400%, not 14, I mean it's 14 times a factor of 14 to an engineer like me that's called an order of magnitude. That gets my attention really, really heavily. What are we doing? We're giving you more. We're at 98.6. DHA goes rancid at room temperature. At 98.6, it all goes, all goes rancid. And what happens is the body has antioxidants naturally. But when all these poor people are taking this fish oil, all the antioxidants, for example, in the brain are going into the bloodstream to go, what the heck is this overdose of this stuff? I have to protect it. It's all going to go bad. Now your brain doesn't have enough antioxidants. None of the tissues have enough antioxidants. So once again, humans are our own worst enemy, just like with trans fats and saturated fats. Saturated fats were great. What did Canada do? Came in with canola oil, booed out the coconut oil, which is 93% saturated fat. Do you know any biochemistry? A saturated fat can't combine with anything. It's not reactive. There's no saturated fat in arterial clog. Let me repeat that. Zero saturated fat in arterial clog. When I saw this, high-resolution chromatography published in the Lancet, it was okay. They're saying zero, but maybe they can only measure to the closest 50%. You know, don't know what the resolution is. No, they can measure to a tenth. The answer is zero. Ask your cardiologist how much saturated fats in a clogged artery. They'll probably tell you it all is. You know what it is? It's 85% adulterated parent omega-6, and it's not going bad in the body. Dr. Speiteller, one of Germany's top biochemists, institute shareholder, all of it comes from the food. Cholesterol is very resistant to oxidation, and it's all coming in ready-made. It's 85% ruined food. So all that fast food is giving you a heart attack, and it's just 
We're so misled. That's why I get so passionate about this, because the medical community doesn't know this. And once they know it, it's my goodness, you're kidding me. 85% of that clog is from what I ate? Yes. And they don't tell you this. So coming back to the derivative piece, are there some people that cannot make that conversion or is that not a concern? Yes, it can be impaired. What you're talking about is a delta-6 desaturase enzyme. And what they always say, it's slow. Well, if you know any engineering, any mathematics, it's called a time constant. It's either the minus T over tau. When T goes to infinity, that goes to one, and it's all converted. So there's no problem with time. It's not slow. It's the amount, the quantity is next to nothing. Because these derivatives, they're called the cosinoids, they're cellular hormones and they're incredibly powerful. Hormones are very, very powerful. You need very little. It's less than a tenth of a percent get converted to derivatives. When I said it's less than 1%, 99 stand parent, it's actually less than a tenth of a percent. It's that low. So that was the mistake, and every proponent of fish oil is living in the past. And we're talking about fish oil, just came out the cardiac enzymes. This was another paper, November 2017. American Society for Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. No physician's ever going to read this. They talked about cardiolipin. Cardiolipin is in the inner layer of the mitochondria. Mitochondria are where you get your energy from in every cell. We have 100 trillion cells. A cell can have hundreds of mitochondria. So there's actually more mitochondria. The inner layer is all parent omega-6. So if you're tired, you have a deficiency of cardiolipin, which is the parent omega-6, in that mitochondria. And the article actually said, here's the problem. When you're taking all the super physiologic fish oil, it displaces the parent omega-6. And the article actually used the word rescues. They said, if you stop the fish oil and start taking the parent omega-6, it rescues that problem. Now, it takes about 18 weeks. There was a study on this. How long does it take to get this fish oil out of your system? 18 weeks. And what fish oil acts like is a long-term steroid. And if you mention to any physician staying on a long-term steroid, they will look in horror because steroids are horrible. They shut down everything. Long-term, you're dead. They shut down all the EFA, the PEO metabolism. So you get no derivatives, you get no nothing. And that's what fish oil does. That's why doctors, every time they lecture, well, Brian, it, it helps uh, skin conditions like psoriasis. And I go, that's interesting. I'm not sure why. A dermatologist sent me something. He goes, what do you mean you don't know why? You say it acts like a long-term steroid. That's what it's doing. It's, it, it's minimizing the immune system. That's not the answer. The answer is take the parent oils because your skin, I didn't tell you this, all parent omega-6. There's no omega-3 in it. So skin cancer is through the roof what happens? Remember, it goes into a proportion. I take all this fish oil. I take all this adulterated oils. It gets shoved into the skin, in addition to the intima, the inner lining of the artery, and you put heat on it, it goes bad. It's not the ultraviolet rays, UAB and UAA, or UVA and B. It's not that. It's the pure heat. It goes bad at room temperature, remember, 70 degrees. DHA is going bad. Has six double bonds. EPA has five double bonds. They're retroconvertible in the body. So DHA, EPA, you look at one thing. We keep getting misled. So I specialize in physiology, and very few in the world do that. And when you look at the physiology of the human body and how we work, wow, we are. Fish oil is the number one supplement in America, if not the world. A poison. And it's interesting, your comments about it then acting like a steroid in yes. people, you know, a lot of the people that are listening to this podcast are dealing this with- This was chronic- published, by the way, in 2000. An article said that, and nobody listened. A lot of people listening to this show are dealing with chronic infections like Lyme yes. disease, viruses, parasites, fungal issues, and so on. And so it sounds like if it's acting like a steroid and potentially reducing the immune function, that's exactly the wrong thing in someone yes. who has a chronic infection, right? You potentially are allowing the infections to become a bigger problem. I get people emailing me all the time, fish oil didn't work. It actually made me worse. And it goes on and on and on. And what does the medical community say? It's your problem. Wait a minute. It's supposed to work. And you're absolutely right. You don't want a lowered immune system, especially with Lyme disease and that sort of thing. You want maximum cellular oxygenation, maximum 
structural integrity of the cell membrane and absolute mitochondrial function to keep that oxygen going and the energy up. So people that start taking these PEOs, their energy goes through the roof. Bodybuilders recuperate 20% more endurance, 20, 25% faster recuperation. Uh, sports players, martial artists, you get hit, you recover. Yeah. If you're taking too much fish oil, by the way, you smack yourself, you bump into something, you'll get a hematoma. That's a black and blue mark. Mm -hmm. That's excessive bleeding. You do surgery. They don't want you touching this stuff because you bleed. And it's 70% more than if you weren't taking it. With the parent oils, you don't bleed at all. We're doing studies, and actually a, a big study on expedited surgical healing because patients heal 25 to 50% faster. Remember, the parent omega-6 makes the skin. You get maximum anti-inflammation from PGE1. You get maximum vasodilation, PGI2 and PGE1. So you get the nutrients to that tissue and you heal like you wouldn't believe. So let's talk then about the oils that you find beneficial in the parent oil realm. So yeah. which oils provide the parent omega-6? There's many oils. What you need is a ratio for a supplement. So there's sunflower oil. It's all parent omega-6. Safflower oil, all parent omega-6. What's happened is the cooking oil industry has changed the genetics of these oils to make it what's called high oleic, which is omega-9, for frying. And the original oils were never like that. So what you'll see is high oleic sunflower oil, high oleic safflower oil. You don't want that because it has 10 times too much oleic acid, which is olive oil. Olive oil is a zero. It's not the secret to the Mediterranean diet. Well, it is, but not for the reason they're telling you. It's not a processed oil over there. They have extra version typically. You start processing the oil, you have a problem. But olive oil has 7% parent oils, which is nothing. You want an oil having huge amounts, like sunflower is 70%. Evening primrose is 60 to 70%. So you have evening primrose, you have sunflower, you have safflower, you have pumpkin. Flax oil has a combination of parent omega-6 and parent omega-3, but it's a backwards ratio. So you have people out there saying you need a lot of flax oil. That will screw you up totally, too, because you have way too much parent oil of the omega-3 series. Mm -hmm. And even a cow, grass is highly parent omega-3. Not a lot of 6 in there. Preponderance of omega-3, but their body burns it up, and the tissue of a grass-fed cow is actually two to one parent omega-6. So even the cow living on a parent omega-3 diet, body doesn't want it. It uses very little of it. It needs it in the structure, but it doesn't do anything for the oxygen transfer, doesn't do anything for the derivatives like PGE-1. It's called number one because it's the most powerful, and PGI-2. There's no analogies in omega-3 or fish oil to those powerful derivatives whatsoever. So and nuts have them, walnuts, for example, but it's five to one parent omega-6 to parent omega-3. And these people come out, oh, it's the omega-3 in the walnut is why Seventh-day Advents are so healthy. They don't even look at the analysis. It's five times more parent omega-6. That's why they're healthy. And they're typically eating nuts that aren't processed. So walnuts are an excellent source of parent omega-6. So talk a little about coconut oil. Is it a source of parent omegas? And what are your thoughts on the recent article that came out from the Harvard professor saying that yeah, coconut I heard, oil I heard was that. complete yeah. poison? Yeah, coconut is, is not a big source of parent oils. It's about 7%. It's 93% saturated fat. Like I said before, a saturated fat is ideal for cooking because it's non-reactive. So whoever wrote that is an utter idiot. And if he was here, I'd say it to his face because he has no understanding of biochemistry or physiology. It is utterly stupid. Again, how much saturated fat is an arterial clog? Zero. So if I eat the saturated fat, now, if you eat a cup of that, you're going to impact the delta-6, the saturase enzyme. But nobody's doing that for normal amounts. It's like with water. If I shove a gallon of water down your throat right now, you're dead. So, you no, know, who the heck is going to do that? Nobody in their right mind, unless they're force-fed. So, cooking in coconut oil, excellent. You can't believe this kind of stuff. Here's what I tell everybody. Number one, what is the metabolic pathway that causes what you're saying, sir? They'll typically look at you like a glazed look over their eyes, like, what? How does it work? What is the metabolic pathway? 
And if you can't give it to that person, run. If that doctor, if that healthcare professional can't give you the pathway, they don't know what they're talking about. And this is a problem today. Everybody thinks they know what they're saying. And I don't publish anything until I've gone through it for typically 90 days and look at every possible angle. If it was true, could it be true? That's where I start. And then what does this imply? If this were true, then that implies this, that implies that, that implies this. I go three levels deep. And most of what these people say, it's insane. And that's why everybody is so sick in spite of trying to do the right thing to be healthy. If you ask everybody, what's the number one thing? I don't want to get cancer. I don't want to get heart disease. And I sure as heck don't want to get dementia and Alzheimer's. And in spite of that, there's only one trend. Everybody's getting more heart attacks. Now, medicine's advanced, so you don't die right off the bat as a rule. But there's no less people getting heart attacks. The number one killer, cancer. On average, you get cancer. 53% of women get cancer, 70% of men. So look to the person to the left of you. One of the two of you is getting cancer. On average, you will get cancer because the membrane screwed up and that oxygen transfer and the cancer research institutes don't even understand the prime cause of cancer. Otto Warburg, again, Nobel Prize winner, greatest physiologist 20th century, called it the prime cause of cancer, lack of cellular oxygenation. He didn't know what caused it. That is the cell membrane being impaired because of food processing. It is that simple, but people have a hard time believing it. I've written extensively. I wrote a book called The Hidden Story of Cancer. It's a textbook for really physicians, but it's understandable. That took me four years to write, and it's heavily based on Otto Warburg's work. You know, I got to stand on the shoulders of a giant, so it was it was wonderful. And he's not taken seriously the way he should be either. People hated him because he was so brilliant. Let's talk about the adulterated oils a little bit yeah. more. What makes an oil become adulterated and what are some of the sources? Where are we getting so many of these adulterated oils? It's only food processing. It is okay. only food processing to get longer shelf life. So the food companies, again, they can't have pasta, cereal, any food smelling like fish that's gone bad. So they've got to stop that. And there's many ways to do it. Again, the trans fat, New York came out years ago. We're banning trans fats. And I said to a colleague, the minute I heard that on the radio, what the heck do you think they're going to replace it with? I said, I can assure you it will be worse. And actually, it is worse. It's called an interesterified fat. You can look it up. It raises resting blood sugar level. So if you want to create diabetes, and by the way, we do have a diabetic epidemic in America. Everybody's becoming diabetic. No end in sight. Give them that interesterified fat. Good job, New York. See, they had the right intentions and didn't follow through with how you're going to do this and didn't understand a fully saturated fat like coconut oil, palm oil, tallow, like McDonald's used to fry in all the time until they got political heat, was the answer. Nobody was sick back then. We had so little heart disease and cancer in the 1900s, it was 5%. Well, Brian, they didn't categorize it back then. Oh, really? You're so sure about that? Yeah, they did. They had registries in 1900. Lancet was 1850s, the Lancet was published, and in nine, I, I put my fingers on them at the Houston Academy of Medicine in the library. I touched it, 1850, they knew what cancer was. So we didn't have it, and they tracked it. The person that came up with the EKG for heart disease was told when he came to America in 1920s, go back home. We don't have any heart disease. Now, everybody. Look at the cardiologist's office overflowing in spite of the big savior of statins. Doctor, why is everybody in the, in the waiting room outflowing into the halls if this stuff worked? Like I told you, it works 1%. That's a 99% failure rate. So I have 100 TV sets. I turn on 100 of them. 99 blow up and one works. Would you say great job? Only in the medical profession and in the pharmaceutical industry is 1% brilliant. It's incredible, the con job we've been given. It's horrible. Again, there's no cholesterol sensor. Is there a... But there is a sensor for the adulterated oils in that cell membrane that just came out in 2017, I told you about, Journal of Biological Chemistry. Is there a laboratory test that one can perform to see what their fat balance is between good and bad, adulterated, yeah, unadulterated? Absolutely. Yep, yep, there are tests. That's the big thing, the omega spot test, blood spot test. You can do those. 
The problem is what they tell you to do is they have been politically swayed to say you need so much omega-3 and so much DHA EPA, which they put you into the danger zone. So I tell people you can get it, but don't listen to where they tell you you're supposed to be because they don't have a clue and you're going to come back deficient in this stuff. I just told you two major articles. Mm -hmm. Heart disease isn't helped at all. And by the way, macular degeneration failed. New England Journal of Medicine. The eye is the second biggest depository of DHA. Cognition, learning disability, Alzheimer's, complete failure. There's three pharmaceutical companies that have fish oil products. Omicor, is, is, I forget what they are. I don't bother with it. But Espanova, uh, there's three. Pharmaceutical companies run drug trials. If you think they haven't already done the trials to see if it would cure any disease, think again. The only indication pharmaceutical companies can get is lowering hyper -tri the triglycerides, hypertriglyceridemia. And that is the only thing. It lowers the triglycerides. That's it. They can get no other indication whatsoever. And that should be enough. If they can't get indications, this stuff doesn't work. It's incredible. But people hang on to it. It has to work. It's got to be good for something. Yeah, it's good for throwing down the toilet. That's what fish oil is good for. <laughs> if someone's interested in using the parent essential oils and yeah. wants to kind of show before and after from a lab test perspective, are there some common markers that, that would be test, worth? Yes, that blood spot test will give you that. So the okay. parents, absolutely. It gives you a full range of what's in there. So you can see how it's increasing and you want more of the parent omega-6, you want more of the parent omega-3, you want very little of the DHA EPA. And is that, is that from a specific company or is that through LabCorp? Multiple ones. You could, you could just do, okay. any of them can do them. You could just pull it up on the internet, doesn't matter much. So coming back to the fish oil conversation, yeah. it, it sounds like it's not only that fish oil isn't helping us, but it sounds like it's actually harming us, correct? When I say it's a poison. Your cardiac enzymes go down by as much as 50%. And that's because the mitochondria doesn't work in the heart. Once again, epidemic of heart disease, fish oil is helping it. And this is published. I have nothing to do with any of this. People slam me all the time. I wrote major papers on how fish oil could not be counted on to cure heart disease. And I had two papers retracted because so many complained about it, even though the science was unbelievably solid. They all complained and they retracted it. Well, now I'm vindicated. I, I wrote this years ago, but now doesn't do anything for heart disease and it doesn't do anything for, again, macular degeneration, learning disabilities, cognitive abilities in the brain. It doesn't do anything for anything except acting, acting as a long-term steroid. That's it. And it's interesting because so many people in the chronic illness realm are focused on oxidative stress and wanting to reduce that. This increases what, it. What, yes. Exactly, exactly. It's yeah. the, we are our own worst enemies, I told you. Room temperature, DHA with six double bonds goes spontaneously rancid. And actually, here's, here's the number. The omega-3, because I keep, keep this chart, with the iron ascorbic acid catalyst, 42 times more rancidity than parent omega-6. 42 times the increase in auto oxidation is 26 times. That means you don't do anything, it just goes bad of the parent omega-6. So the parent omega-6 does not go bad in the body, it doesn't even need the antioxidants. The parent omega-3, virtually no issue either because that has three double bonds, but you've got a five and six double bonds. The more double bonds, the more reactive. And body wants very little of that on purpose. So the oxidative stress by taking fish oil supplements is enormous. People are killing themselves. When I say it's a poison, I am not being facetious. I am dead serious. And I've been warning people about this for the past 10 years. I had no vindictive issue with fish oil. It was like, you know, I always specialize in the plant oils because they make the structure. And then when this fish oil came in, I would be at trade shows and I would ask the distributors, is anybody buying this stuff? No, no took 10 years and huge amount of money to con people into thinking this stuff worked. And what they would do is a huge number of trials. And I told you with that 5% confidence interval, you would get failures looking like it worked and it didn't. And unless you do a very 
controlled trial, double blind placebo, there's all kinds of other things that make the person better. They could be doing 10 interventions. And what do you do? You pick all the fish oil did it. How do you know? Because I want it to be that. So it's called wishful thinking. I'm not into that. I'm into quantitative analysis, cause and effect. I have no interest in associations. And that's epidemiology in like Harvard. The associations, they look at people. Well, when the doctors did that in the OBGYN, they were telling women hormone therapy stopped heart, heart attacks. It was actually just the opposite. The hormone therapy, what they were doing was giving women more heart attacks. So you have to be incredibly careful with observational studies. And that can give you an indication. You can say, hey, this looks interesting. Let's do a real study, a real trial and control everything. You can only have one variable. And when you do that, failure, failure and failure again. So let's talk a little about cell membranes. So we yeah. talked about cell membranes, mitochondrial membranes, the health of our cell membranes, I think, as I understand it, really correlates very highly to our overall systemic health as well. Yeah, Bruce Lipton, superb scientist, did a lot of work with this. He didn't go quite to the level that I do with what's making up the cell membrane, but he was so before his time and what he had, and what's tragic is he ended up spending more time in the spiritual community which is fine, instead of the medical community where he, his work is solid. He's a biologist, a biochemist. He couldn't even have an audience with physicians listening to him. This is how bad it is today. They want nonsense, not science. I believe you mentioned that of the cell membrane, that the yeah. PEO content, uh, there's about half of it that's a lipid. You mentioned that about a third of that lipid content was parent essential oils. Yes. So what is the other two thirds of that lipid component? Is that phosphatidylcholine? Is it something else? Yeah, there's a lot in there. Phosphatidylcholine, it, it is in there. The body makes it. So there's supplements that have that, but the body doesn't need it. It can package it just fine. There's a lot of oleic acid, probably 30%, which is omega-9. That's in olive oil, but your body can make that one too. That's why there's only two essentials. But in the EFA realm, it's parent omega-6, parent omega-3, virtually no derivatives. The derivatives get made as needed as a response to a problem. So if there's inflammation, and some inflammation is good. Everybody goes, oh, you want no, you want no unnatural inflammation. If I take a knife and cut the heck out of my arm, it's going to bleed, right? Yep. And it better get inflamed because inflammation tells the body, heal that sucker and tell it to stop bleeding get some fibrinogen of going on there and stop it. So we need inflammation. What we don't need is the artificial man-made inflammation from eating the wrong stuff that's inflammatory. Like, and, and the number one thing is the oils. So I'm a life systems engineering scientist. I always look at what's more important and what's less important. Too many in the nutritional community throw everything together. Everything in moderation. Oh, a little cyanide in moderation is good? What do you mean everything in moderation? I, I would say that if I understood nothing. Everything is not in moderation. The oils are paramount. Proteins, there's not much of a problem with. A lot of people live in amino acids. What they don't understand is the oils, the lipids, tell the DNA and the proteins what to do. It's all based in, well, I'm talking genetics. The genetic change is the result of the problem. For example, in cancer, the lack of cellular oxygen causes the DNA change. And the analogy to that is I take a nice blowtorch and put it on my arm, burn the living heck out of it. Do you think the DNA changed in there? Of course, it's ruined. But what ruined it? The torch. It's the same thing with the lack of cellular oxygenation changed the DNA. So everyone in the cancer community has got the cause reversed with the effect. That's why they get nowhere. It's if, a tragedy. If what I'm hearing correctly, yeah. what you're suggesting is that the parent essential oils act as positive epigenetic influencers of our, of our gene expression. And everything is epigenetics. Yep. Even the founder of the oncogene at MIT, it's where I went to school, mm -hmm. reversed themselves saying in a million base pairs, you need about 10 mutations. There's only three or four. There's not enough to cause this. But nobody saw that either. It was called one renegade cell. His name is Weinberg. Brilliant guy. He reversed it. There is no, quote, oncogene. It's lack of cellular oxygen. And this is why 
the treatments are all incremental. I don't care what they come up with. There's major side effects. The big thing now is immunotherapy because we're talking about cancer. That was my first love. I spent years in you know, the medical library over there. It can cause good tissue to turn on itself and die. I mean, what kind of a therapy does that? And by the way, what do you mean immunization? Immunization is something I get so I don't get the disease. It's not after the fact. So they're even brilliant in coming up with a term to mislead you. It's not immunotherapy. Your immune system has nothing to do with cancer, by the way. Cancer is not a foreign invader. It's lack of cellular oxygen. It's not like a bacteria or a virus came in. There's nothing for the immune system to do. That's ridiculous. Same thing with heart disease. It has nothing to do with the immune system. It's the inflammation caused by what we're doing to ourselves. But you're 100% right. Everything is epigenetic and cancer. Dr. Bissell was brilliant on this. Nobody follows it. Nobody follows up. They come up with something brilliant, and then it stops. I stay connecting the dots and don't let off. Old research is wonderful. It's like gravity with Newton in the 1700s. Gravity hasn't changed. I throw you off the top of a building, you fall and kill yourself on the floor, right on the street. What's changed? So what they'll say is, oh, the old research is, what? This is the problem in the medical field. They don't build on the old research. If you watch on any television show, impossible engineering, extreme engineering, it's always, how did we solve this? We went to the brilliant engineer of the past. How did they solve that? Oh, before him, there was another brilliant engineer that did this. It's all building on something. In medicine, the whole thing is just genetics, and it's insane. That's why, thank goodness, I don't come from the medical field, or I wouldn't have any of this either. I would have started with genetics, which is backwards. Remember, it's the effect, not the cause. That's why they get nowhere. And it's interesting, because if we look at omega-6s, what people are being told is yeah. that they're pro-inflammatory, that we need yeah. to reduce them. But what people are referring to is the adulterated oils, because what you're suggesting is that yes. parent omega-6 oils they can actually help to reduce inflammation and even so much so that a CRP can show that reduction in some cases, correct? Absolutely true. And this was published November 2017. The associations of serum N6, PEOs, with serum C-reactive protein in an ischemic heart disease risk factor study. The more parent omega-6 they had, and it had to be unadulterated, the less heart disease and inverse correlation. And one guy causes big problem with arachidonic acid. Oh, that's gonna kill you, blah, blah, blah. The more parent omega-6 you consume, the less arachidonic acid there is. And arachidonic acid is the direct precursor of PGI-2, that's the prostacyclin, making it where the platelets can't stick together and can't stick to the inside of the artery. So it prevents heart disease and everybody just was a parrot and just parroted this nonsense. There's very little free arachidonic acid running around. It stays in the cell membrane, and it comes out and makes the derivatives. It's a derivative too, but it can come from animal sources. So there's no problem with that. We keep getting misled, and it gets parroted. There's no thought. They just parrot it. And it's, it's like saturated fat gives you a heart attack. Don't eat any bacon, eggs, cheese, butter, cream. What's the metabolic pathway, sir? How does it do it? Well, it's in the clog. No, it's not. You can use high resolution. So people need to really start asking very pointed questions. And somebody once told me, the intelligence of the answer is proportional to the intelligence of the question. You better get used to asking very intelligent questions. But again, because everybody's so tired, because everybody has become so stupid, I say it's not their fault. They're all the fate efficient. I could never talk like this before, by the way. <laughs> As I get these parent oils, it is like laser attention. I can think and think and think about the same thing. Remember I told you before, go to a restaurant, the order taker forgets what you said is to go. Is that to go or for here, sir? The first thing I said was it's to go. That was 32 seconds ago. I timed it. <laughs> they forget. They have no memory, but it's not their fault. They're all the evade efficient. So any of the kids in school, ADHD, it's the same thing. Too many carbs, of course, which are piping them about in sugar, mm -hmm. but they don't have the parent oils. So you have a hundred trillion cell membranes that are defective. And in the brain, remember all the capillaries, that's where the nutrient transfer is, 100% parent omega-6. Now the surgeons know this, the vascular radiologists know this, the microcirculation, but it never gets the attention it should because nobody ever says a capillary is all parent omega-6. How the heck can it be bad? What are you talking about?
<laughs> so let's talk really irks me. Yeah. Let's come back to the insulin resistance and diabetes discussion. Yeah. So do fish oils potentially contribute then to insulin yes. resistance and diabetes because they're basically yes. creating this plastic essentially in our cell membranes is what we're suggesting. And then are the PEOs a potential tool in someone who's already dealing with insulin resistance, already dealing with diabetes? Can they potentially turn that situation around by incorporating the parent essential oils? Yeah, excellent question. Absolutely. Fish oil exasperates resting blood glucose levels. There were three separate studies I saw, completely independent. Every one of them did it in all the patients. So if you want to exasperate diabetes, and also the one where they gave them fish oil, the first thing was the DHA and the cardiac enzymes was 70% higher than normal. So if you're taking fish oil in the heart itself with the enzymes, which are what tells everything to do in the mitochondria, you are mimicking a diabetic. So the answer is absolutely fish oil makes a diabetic worse. The oily fish did a study on that one too. The people eating it, higher blood sugar levels. This is all in my book, PEO Solution with Dr. Rowan. All of it's there. And it is shocking. It is underpublicized. You don't hear about it. And absolutely, remember that fish oil displaces the parent omega-6 that's supposed to be in there. So everybody needs less insulin when the right fully functional parent oils go into that cell membrane. And you cut back on the adulterated food, the fast food. You don't need to cut it all out, but just some of it out. Can, and the can. difference is fast. Remember, 18 weeks to get rid of all the fish oil overdose. 18 weeks. But that's not bad. Can the parent oils then lead to a reduction in fasting glucose levels? Yes, we get that all the time. Cool. So you, so you put that together with less carbohydrates because carbohydrate sugar, this is the other big thing. When I first was looking at this, again, my wife became diabetic doing everything. So how much sugar is in the bloodstream? Because we're told to live on carbs, right? This was back, you know, this was 20 years ago. You know what the answer is? Less than a teaspoon. It's seven tenths of a teaspoon. So they don't say this, it's millimoles per deciliter. So I'm going through this. I'm an engineer. What the heck does that translate to? So I did the calculation. It's seven tenths of a teaspoon in a gallon of blood, five quarts of blood, seven tenths of a teaspoon? Teaspoon, I'm taking one teaspoon. So I gave it to a colleague. I said, I'm off by a factor of 10 or 100 here somewhere. He said, no, you're absolutely right. And it was my goodness. On a 2,000 calorie a day diet, we're told 60% carbohydrates, which is 1,200 calories, Every 20 calories of carbohydrates, a teaspoon of sugar, that's 60 teaspoons of sugar a day in a system that has less than one. What do you think is happening? Number one, your body is going nuts. Get this sugar the heck out of me. Hyper <laughs> hyperattention, hy hyperactivity in kids. And fat, insulin, textbook of medical physiology. Insulin's a fat storage hormone. There's no insulin response to a protein in the bloodstream or a fat. You mentioned that cancer really boils down to a lack of cellular oxygen. You've said that the parent essential oil, oils work, yes. That the parent essential oils can actually draw oxygen into the cells, into the tissues, into our organs. What's the mechanism? How does how does taking two things? They make it where the cell membrane is fully functional so the oxygen can diffuse without getting bashed with a piece of plastic. Second thing is it actually disassociates, meaning the oxygen in the oils come out of it. So it's a double whammy. There's a disassociation curve. Nobody ever, ever, ever talks about that. So the cell membrane has its source of cellular oxygen right in the membrane. And that's critical. So there's two sources of how it does it. And again, Campbell's work talked about this in 1976. You can pull the paper. And when Dr. Rowan saw it, he was shocked too. I mean, nobody's seen this. This is what I mean. They don't build on the brilliant people of the past. It's like, we need a study. Studies aren't science. Let me repeat that probably three times. A study is not science. Doctors always go, show me the study. I said, don't you want to hear the physiology or biochemistry first? No. Plus, who paid for the study a lot of the times? <laughs> the cancer doctor just got slammed for not declaring his financial interest to the drug companies. Yep. Sloan Kettering in New York, all over the papers, all over the news. 17 papers would talk about how a drug works when it didn't. Didn't disclose once he's paid to say it works. 
Yeah. This is the tragedy. We we get slanted, misled. I all I care about is what's right. I mean, I specialize in plant-based oils and I have patents in that. I'll tell you that right off the bat, but I don't do these papers I've been mentioning here. They're not my name on it. They're independent. I am a theoretist, so I predict. I really love it when somebody comes up and goes, yeah, clinically, man, you were right. Or here's the mechanism. So many people with chronic health challenges have low energy, fatigue. Mitochondria. Yeah, so talk to us about the role of the parent essential oils in mitochondria and ATP production, cellular energy. Yeah, well, mitochondria is the cellular power plant. It's the oxygen. I mean, it's work, you know, it needs oxygen. And that's the equivalent of breathing for the whole body is the mitochondria in the cell. And it all happens in that inner membrane. It's a double layer membrane, again, in the mitochondria too. And it's all cardiolipin. And for EFAs, it's 100% parent omega-6. And if you're taking fish oil or not getting the fully functional parent omega-6 because you don't get organic oils, and most people aren't, they're getting store-bought oils and cooking in it, or they're buying store-bought food. And unless it's organic, it's all ruined. And very little has to be ruined. They'll say there's no trans fats, for example. Well, legally, great cardiologist told me this, said, Brian, you can have 0.5 grams, which is next to nothing. 454 grams are in a pound. So half a gram is next to nothing. Well, when you calculate it out, it turns out just that little bit, which the FDA allows you to say zero, overpowers every cell in your body by a factor of 10,000. Mm-hmm. Now picture here, you're the world's best martial artist and you got 10,000 lug heads just running at you. You're dead. They're just going to overpower you. That's the challenge of the body eating this stuff. So it takes very little of this junk to create enormous problems. And if your mitochondria doesn't work, I went to a mitochondrial conference years ago. Nobody cared. All they would talk about, they have a yearly conference on this. I said, everything is in the cardiolipe. And I gave my stuff to six doctors there. Zero. There was no interest. It's tragic. Everybody is working in their own little thing, has their own little pet theory, and doesn't look at the existing physiology and biochemistry. Studies should only confirm the existing biochemistry and physiology, not the opposite to it. For example, I hear better skin from fish oil. How, sir, there's no fish oil in my skin. How is it better? And they just because, look at you. Because well, it's acting as a steroid. So let's talk then about inflammation in people that maybe have something like fibromyalgia, for example. So I know that you've suggested in some cases beyond the parent oils, adding organic GLA can be helpful as well. So when might you consider organic GLA? You asked me a question before I didn't answer. There is an impairment in that delta-6 desaturase in people undergoing cancer therapy, for example, because radiation and chemotherapy shut that mechanism down. So this is why they get so very, very sick. One of the reasons it's specifically the delta-6 desaturase is impaired. An alcoholic, somebody drinking a lot of alcohol, impairs that. So if you have a disease, a diabetic is impaired. It's not to zero. It's not half impaired. You'd be dead. But it is impaired. So I advise every formulation with the parent oils to get some of the GLA organic. And evening primrose oil is a great source of that. So it bypasses the delta-6 desaturase. So that's the first derivative and it gets ready-made, it goes to DGLA, but it doesn't need the Delta-6 to saturate, so it bypasses it. So you just need a little, you don't need a lot. Remember, there's very little of this made, and that will help that incredibly. But back to your inflammation, fibromyalgia and all other inflammation is tied to the adulterated oils in the cell membrane because the cell is sensing it, and you have chronic low-grade inflammation 24 hours a day. That is zapping all your oxygen because the body tries to get rid of inflammation by more oxygen. So it's unproductive. It's like I have one foot on the brake, one foot on the gas on a car. I'm going nowhere, but I'm burning up the fuel and blowing up the engine. That's the way most people are. They don't even know what feeling well is anymore. Mm -hmm. They're half dead. You look at them, they have a glazed look in their eye. You ask them any question, they can't even answer it. All they do is sit in their phones and play games on the, I mean, it, it, it's horrible. And a lot of this is tied to this deficiency. People should not want to be living on a phone just playing games. There's just something wrong with that. It's <laughs> a little of it. I don't have an issue with, but we're not made to be on that thing eight hours a day. And that's what they're getting their kids. I'd be 
petrified if I had a kid that's an adolescent today. So just to clarify, is there then a role for GLA in yes. inflammation related to fibromyalgia? You're suggesting we still should add some GLA to the parent? Absolutely, because it makes the PGE1 and it bypasses the delta-6 desaturase enzyme that could be impaired in somebody that's chronically sick. So the sickest person is actually making the least natural anti-inflammatory. It's unfortunate that this happens. So absolutely, we've got phenomenal response in fibromyalgia with the parent oils. And how much GLA would one add to the parent oils in that scenario? Well, there's oils that you, you, you contain it. It, it. It's not by itself. Okay. It's uh, GLA containing oils. There's black currant seed has it, borage has it, even primrose has it, hemp has it. I'm not big on hemp because there's no long-term culinary usage in any country that anybody's used, so I can't advise it. If you want to be your own lab rat, that's fine, but people are counting on me to get healthy. I can't go, I don't know, and I won't do that when there's sources I know. I like even primrose oil. It's expensive okay. as heck, and that's why most formulations won't use it. It's about $10,000 for a drum of this stuff, believe it or not. So I, I have, though, seen some parent oil products that do have evening primrose oil in them. So is it the case then that for getting the GLA that we may need more than what's in yes. that type of a formula? Yes, there's no downside to a, having a little of it whatsoever. There's no downside to the omega-6. Fully functional, you can have double. On a daily basis of, of normal. So if you have a condition, heart disease, cancer, fibromyalgia, anything, Lyme disease, you could take double all day long. And what I recommend is only three grams, which is very, very little. Three grams is half a teaspoon <laughs> of the right parent essential oil formulation with a little GLA in there. Um, if it's done right, you don't need a lot. You go, my goodness, a half a teaspoon a day gives me what I need. So you've talked about brain problems, memory, dementia, cognitive issues, Alzheimer's, and how those are affected, that we need the parent oils for the capillaries, for the circulation. Yeah. Is there potentially a role for these oils in children on the autism spectrum, for example? Absolutely. Dr. Pompas used it for, for autism and has had excellent results. So the answer is absolutely. You need every possible benefit to oxygenation, blood flow, everything. So the answer is absolutely. And it, it works to varying degrees, of course, depending on the impairment, but everybody gets some level of improvement. What are some of those improvements that you've gotten as feedback from people that incorporate these plant-based oils? What, what are some of the things that they might see? Overall? Yep. Uh, a lot of people have insomnia problems. That goes away. Skin ailments. Again, skin is all paired omega-3. Tons of that. People get the best skin in the world. Cellulite takes a hike. I did a test with my wife. I gave her the oils for 90 days. Cellulite's down by half. Took it away. Gave her something else that looked like it. All came back. She wanted to kill me. But yeah, we have Hollywood celebrities that, that take this. There's a big, big doctor that has a lot of celebrity clients. He goes, Brian, I can tell you Cher takes it because she publicly disclosed something. There's HIPAA laws and privacy laws. He goes, I'll tell you, there's 14 to 15 others. I can't give you their names but they're all taking it. So it's, it's very rewarding that it gives them the energy. We have pro athletes taking this. Uh, anybody undergoing surgery, we had an 85 year old patient fell, uh, tripped in the snow, went face down on concrete on the road, big black and blue, was taking the oils, no broken nose, no broken cheekbones, healed phenomenally, no drugs, no anything. I think 55 days. It was under two months. People couldn't believe this. They've never seen anything like it. So your recuperative ability is through the roof because you're optimized. Again, the human body is a superb machine. We are a super high performance Ferrari running on water or unleaded gasoline and blaming the body. Oh, there's a genetic defect or, oh, you go to heck just because you get older or there's 27 excuses. Oh, your eye color's wrong. We meet, we're the same machine. We're much more alike than we are different. Let me repeat it. Everybody's different. Women especially love that. I'm special. You're about as special as a piece of, what do you mean you're special? Can you live underneath the dirt like a termite? No, <laughs> we have all the same physiology. There's one book of physiology. There's different authors that do it, but it's all the same stuff. We have the same biochemistry, same physiology. What works for me will work for you. 
Give us a few thoughts on cholesterol. You mentioned earlier that there's not ah. a cholesterol sensor. So what, there's does, no cholesterol sensor. what does taking PEOs do to cholesterol, if anything, over time? Excellent. It does a lot. Well, the first thing is if there's no cholesterol sensor, that leads me to believe because it's called a dependent variable. When everything else is what it is, the cholesterol is going to be what it does. Here's the deal with cholesterol. Cholesterol is a transport system of the oils. You don't just take the stuff and it floats around the bloodstream. How does it get packaged so it's water soluble? Because it's an oil. It's not going to mix, right? Oil and water don't mix. It's called a sterified. So you have the cholesterol molecule here. You have the PEOs here. Magnet. It's called a condensation reaction. Just gets rid of the water. Big term. I don't care about terms. I care about what does it mean. So it's magnified. So when they came about saying lower LDLC cholesterol, it's good for you. It is good for you in one, one way. Remember, I told you all the adulterated fats, all the adulterated parent omega-6, they don't fry in parent omega-3. So nobody's getting adulterated parent omega-3. Probably not getting enough of it because there's not many sources, but you don't need much. But you're not getting it adulterated. But the parent omega-6, if it's adulterated and I get rid of it by lowering the cholesterol, I lower the transported PEOs too. That's good. The problem is you just got rid of all the good ones too. So long term, you are in deep trouble. The answer isn't get rid of the cholesterol. The answer is put in the daily, fully functional, unadulterated. Parent omega-6 is the bulk of what's transported again because it's so critical to the brick and mortar of every cell. Remember the 100 trillion, 100, that's a I say it's 100 billion or 100 trillion. I always forget the word, but it's at least 100 billion cells. I think it's trillion. It's, it, it's, it's unbelievable the number of cells we have. But that's it. Cholesterol is ubiquitous in the body. If you read textbook of medical physiology, it's the number one substance in the body. It's ubiquitous, meaning it's in everything. There's 10 key roles of cholesterol. And when I started researching this, it was just, just when they started with this bad cholesterol. No medical textbook ever used the word bad. How the heck can it be bad when it's needed for everything? It's the substrate of all the hormones, testosterone, progesterone, all kinds of, it goes on and on and on. It's all in the nervous system. It's everything. And the studies they do now, when they lower the cholesterol in the elderly, they die younger. So there was never any bad cholesterol. And I'm always yelling at doctors when I hear this, well, Brian, the bad cholesterol. I said, what? Well, well, Brian, remember, I'm a doctor. He said, you should know better than that. Stop saying this. There was never any bad cholesterol. So if, if the cholesterol were slightly elevated because of, because of an inflammatory condition in the yep. body, I would think then that by taking the parent oils that are then helping to reduce inflammation, then the cholesterol would go back to what was healthier for that person, potentially. Does that yeah, typically, but it's a non-issue anyway. Remember, it's not measured. And there's a condition called cholesterol hypernemia which is elevated cholesterol. And if you go, well, if it's elevated, why didn't they die in a year? Why are they 20 years old? My cat's a pure carnivore, okay? They're obligate carnivores, no grains. They're living on cholesterol because it's all meat. Why aren't they keeling over on a daily basis? So it's made up nonsense. And the way, in the book, I talk about how does fiction become fact? There's a methodology for this. It's all made up garbage, and the proof is the statins don't work. 1% success rate. This is, this is by the pharmaceutical companies themselves. What you'll get is doctors going, well, Brian, that's why you need 100 million people taking it. And I said, you're missing the point. If 99 out of 100 buildings fall down and kill their occupants, are you saying, good job? Are you nuts? The doctors are so kind. Maybe I'll be the lucky one out of the 100 that it works on. Yeah. Doctors have told me this. And they affect... I don't know about the PEOs. They, they affect don't. mitochondria in a negative way. They can affect the heart. They affect the muscles, cocaine yep. and production. Oh, it's horrible. The last things. Let, let's talk a little about hypercoagulation. So many people, chronic infections, chronic illness, have hypercoagulation. Yes. What role do PEOs have? Do they ultimately help to kind of normalize that coagulated state? Yeah. Well, remember, PGI2 makes it work. Platelets can't stick together or can't stick to that artery wall. So it makes the charges proper. Same reason you have cellulite. You have plus and minus sticking instead of pushing. So if it pushes apart, it's going to be very smooth. If they stick together, it's just this big conglomerate mess. Same thing with the blood 
Absolutely. So when people cut themselves, they bleed like boom. And that's what you want because that's what you want inside your body. And within two minutes, it starts clotting. The healing is unbelievable within a day. I mean, there's no pain. The results are just, this is why it works so well in surgery. Again, 25 to 50% faster surgical healing. So with all of the information that you've shared over many, yeah. many years now about fish oil supplements, why are people still using them? Why aren't people listening? Once people make a decision, they don't go back, especially doctors. And they don't care what the heck the new science says. And they don't want to admit they made a mistake. There's very few people. In PEO Solution, a big doctor did admit he made a mistake. He starts out, it's in the preface. He goes, Brian, can I write the preface to this? Starts out, I have a confession to make. He refers to switch oil and he publicly said it. Most doctors will never, ever admit publicly they've made a mistake. And like I said, I just want to be right. If you show me wrong on anything, I'll reverse it in two seconds and put out. It's never happened because before I mouth off, I make sure I'm right. I had fiber fiction before anybody had it. It was published. Increased fiber gives you colon cancer. The Women's Journal of Medicine published this, 1999, 2000. Lancet, the world's premier medical journal, published this. They looked at women taking the most fiber, they the most colon cancer. Well, fiber is sawdust, cellulose. How irritating is that to your delicate colon? And by the way, the whole digestive system is one layer of parent omega-6. So with all this probiotics and everything, nobody is getting, that may be okay for some people. The bigger problem is you don't have fully functional parent omega-6 lining the whole system. So, so that, that transfer. That one layer not being healthy is what we call leaky gut, right? Or intestinal hyperpermeability. So, Junctions, yes. So what we're saying here is that these parent oils have a positive effect on that intestinal hyperpermeability. Just like on your skin. It's waterproof. That's awesome. Yeah. Nothing's getting through it. Absolutely. Very good. It's interesting that, you know, so many people when it comes to fat, I mean, people will hear this and they'll say, oh my gosh, I don't want to take fat because it's going to make me fat. That's not true. And my understanding is that PEOs, even though they are a fat, can actually have a positive, a positive effect on weight loss. Very good. They have a huge effect on weight loss. Here's the reason everybody's hungry so much. Because we're not getting the fully functional PEOs, all nature can do is make them hungry again. So you eat. You don't get enough fully functional PEOs. Crave more food. Eat, crave, eat, crave, eat, crave. You put the PEOs in. I wrote a book called The 24-Hour Diet. talks about the PEOs. And for a diabetic, a protein powder fruit smoothie with the PEOs, phenomenal. We do have a sweet tooth, but not for refined sugars. The fruit, it turns out, has a glucose effect, glycemic effect in the bloodstream, a quarter to a half of what anything else has. So fruit is nature's natural candy. It's really amazing. And I did a test with my wife. But it is amazing what this does. What was the first question before I got off on that tangent with what the oils do for what? Just in terms of how they positively affect weight loss. Yes, because it makes the appetite naturally fulfilled. We have a sensor in the stomach. It's not all in the brain. And once these oils come in, you don't need to be eating a lot of food anymore. So it does that naturally. And actually, there's been studies done that published this in the 1990s. I think one actually came out in 76. I, I gave the reference in, in one of the books. And they knew this. And you said before, fat goes to fat. No, it doesn't. You may think that intuitively, but there has to be glycerol 3 phosphate, which is an enzyme that only comes from eating carbohydrates. So carbohydrates go to fat. Sugar you becomes fat. Think, yeah. Do you actually think? All the fat you eat is going to just go into fat is too critical. Remember, it makes the structure of every one of your 100 trillion cells. So the oils that are PEOs go into the cell structure. They don't make you fat. Yeah. And once again, physiology. It's physiology, physiology, physiology. Physicians don't specialize in this anymore. It's too difficult. They don't want courses in it. And it's tragic that they let them get away with it. When we talk about anti-aging, so many people think of inflammation as a key player. I think that yeah. message is fairly clear. And then they add fish oil, which is anti-anti-aging, as I've heard you say before. So what role do PEOs play in anti-aging strategies? Well, there's articles published that fish oil increases aging 
there's something in the DNA, I forget what it is, telomerase at, at the end. Yep. What they don't tell you is, here's what you gotta be very careful of. A short-term study is worthless. And typically, most of these studies may be 90 days. So you can get a positive result for a multitude of reasons short-term. But it gets better, and then 90 days out, boom, it's killing you. And the study has stopped before then. So telomerase, which they talk about aging, it reverses. When you put in the PEOs, it gets longer. It doesn't oh, wow. get shorter, and it can elongate. And I read a superb paper on it. I don't specialize in that, but I read this. Nobody's told that. It's like it only goes one way, shorter, short. No, it can reverse. So we keep getting misled in all of this stuff. Well, and people use fairly expensive tools in the astragalus uh, uh, extracts and other things to try and lengthen them. And so I, I, even I was not aware that these have the potential for also lengthening the TDM. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Fantastic. So as we wrap up, let's talk a little about the PEO. So the, the PEO products that various companies have created based on the science that you've put together. What's yes, there are a couple of things you have to look for. It yep. has to be organic. If it's not organic, you can't trust it to be fully functional. Yep. It has to have more parent omega-6 than parent omega-3. By how much? At least one to one up to two and a half to one is, yep. is the area. I mean, there's a big range. It's a supplement now. Yeah. Remember I told you the overall tissue is four to one, not overall. Most organs are four to one. Muscle is six and a half to one. In the whole body, when you look at fat stores, because having this in a storage, so if you're not getting anything, if you're starving, the body will use these fats. That's the ketosis thing. You better have a nice store of fully functional parent omega-6. You need that. It's 11 to one. So we need lots of parent omega-6 before a supplement. Remember, we're getting it in the food. Most foods are parent omega-6 based. It's just for a supplement, you got to be careful what you're doing. So I don't like overdosing. I'm very conservative. People say I'm a maverick and everything. I'm nothing of the sort. I'm a very, very conservative scientist. You need some GLA just to ensure if you have a patient who's diabetic or undergoing cancer treatment or has a heart attack or any kind of ailment, it'll bypass a potentially impaired delta-6 to saturate enzyme. Which is involved in the creation of the derivatives. The derivatives, yes. If that's impaired, all the derivatives underneath are impaired too. Mm -hmm. From the omega-6 side and the omega-3 side. So both sides go through the same enzyme. Mm -hmm. And again, it's very, very little. And they talk about competition. You're getting misled once again. All you need to know is next to nothing is made into derivatives. And you better have the fully functional parents. And if you do, you have no problem. With a little GLA, you want low peroxide levels. You want something called low pianisinine level. Pianisinine is what's called a secondary aldehyde. And these are byproducts of fatty acid metabolism. Well, it's not good to have pianisinine. Fish oil, the most pristine fish oil in the world, it's 19. Okay. Well, 20 is hazardous. So they've allowed 19 to be the cutoff where 20 is dangerous. A PEO product without any of that junk in there is four. And you, you know, there's, there's a few tests that you want, but those are the big things. And if anybody has a question, they can certainly send me an email. They can look at my website and, and I'll be happy to tell them what I do or direct them. To so when, when we're talking about PEO supplements, then what's the yes. average amount that an adult would take and can you get too much? You can get too much of the omega-3 side. And if you do, you'll have bleeding gums. You'll hit yourself and have a big hematoma. That's a black and blue mark. Uh, typically, three grams a day for a 160-pound person, prophylactically, meaning you have no ailment. You can have up to double that all the time. If you're a cancer patient, if you're a heart attack patient, you can do triple short term. Again, because you're going to be highly impaired in both the parent omega-6 and the main parent omega-3 side. But I don't want you getting too much parent omega-3 overall. So you can take double the prophylactic dose forever. There's no reason to be taking more. I don't like people wasting their money, but short term, you can take much more. And how long does it take for the average person to feel a benefit from incorporation of the PEOs? Within a week. It is. Well, you have a hundred trillion cells and they're cellular oxygenators. Typically it's, I'm not as tired. I do a lot of writing. So I'd be up at midnight and have to keep going. I take two capsules. So I can get another two hours and I'd be up at four 30 on top of that. And you could do it. And it's not coffee hyper. It's just, I'm not tired. I have the focus. I can work and work and work and work, especially for the children, man, or doing anything where you need attention span, even the surgeons. 
they're just not tired. They can work more and more and more. They're using this now. So I always wrap up with the same last question, which is what are some of the key things that you personally do on a daily basis in support of your health? Minimize the carbs. If you eat a lot of carbs one day, the next day eat next to none. And that's why I did 24 hour diet because doctors asked me, what the heck do I eat? And it, fat goes to fat, that sort of thing. So I minimize the carbs. Uh, I don't exercise much because I can't tell people I'm healthy because I'm living in the gym and I have to do some negative things. I don't want to say I eat perfectly. I do this perfectly. I do that in spite of all the junk things I do, which is more like the average person. My arterial system is still 20 years younger biologically. And that was measured. It was measured two ways independently by a top cardiologist in Boston and by a digital plethysmography machine in, in Iowa. So both ways came out the same 20 years younger. I don't do a heck of a lot. I take the oils. I take minerals. There's some minerals that aren't in the soil anymore. And a detoxifier, which is ESIAC. People could check that out. It's a phenomenal blood purifier and optimizer. That's the best thing that gets rid of stuff in a bloodstream that shouldn't be there. That's really about it. I don't do a heck of a lot. It's, it's really not that hard. It's really not that hard. The oils are fundamental. I hope anybody listening that's a practitioner really gets PEL solution so they can understand why this is so fundamental to any practice they're putting in or any modality of treatment they're, they're doing. It, it's really the Bible and it's state of the art. It's current as of 2017, 2018 even. So I want to thank you for spending time today. Your passion is so obvious and clear. Your brain clearly is functioning well because of these PEOs. <laughs> you know, I, I think we need, until we have solutions for all of the chronic health challenges that are out there, we need people thinking differently from how yeah. everyone else is thinking because the way everyone else is thinking clearly isn't working. So I appreciate well, people like you out there that are really using the science, coming up with ideas, and and really kind of swimming upstream in a way and, and maybe not going with conventional thought because until That's we for have sure. it's, it's like to trying to go up a mountain with a rake <laughs> with a dirt it no, is, but I, I uh, honor you and thank you for doing that I'm excited as I mentioned I do use parent oils on a daily basis myself Excellent. I will continue to and I just thank you so much for all your work and thanks for taking time to be here today thank you and my pleasure to learn more about today's guest, visit brianpeskin.com. That's B-R-I-A-N-P-E-S-K-I-N, brianpeskin.com. Thanks for your interest in today's show. If you'd like to follow me on Facebook or Twitter, you can find me there as Better Health Guy. To support the show, please visit betterhealthguy.com forward slash donate. If you'd like to be added to my newsletter, visit betterhealthguy.com forward slash newsletters. And this and other shows can be found on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and Spotify. Thanks for listening to this Better Health Guy blogcast with Scott, your Better Health Guy. To check out additional shows and learn more about Scott's personal journey to better health, please visit betterhealthguy.com.